In the previous episode, we started our journey uh, in, in Stardew Valley, and you know what? I'm having a lot of fun, having a lot of fun. We got to day four, and now we're gonna push forward. I think we're gonna complete potentially more days as we go, just because that first episode required a lot of pausing or the intro and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this um, plays out. All right, forecast for tomorrow. Beautiful sunny day, good to know. Uh, fortune teller, are we better off today? Good humor today, okay, good. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but every day that we've played in these, uh, the first three days at least. Wow, that carrot grows fast, doesn't it? Um, interesting. 75 energy, it's pretty good. I'm gonna put this in here for now. Um, maybe we can use it later. Anyways, yeah, I, like the first three days I had bad, I had bad luck all three days. Do I have any water like right by my, hmm, this is a problem. I feel like I may need to go buy a well, which I don't think I've really ever bought a well before. I mean, I've, I think I've done like one or two wells in my, uh, I don't know, approximately 300 hours of Stardew Valley. Uh, just because usually I, by the time I need a well, I've already kind of figured out sprinklers and stuff like that. Like when the farm gets big enough. So, but we don't, we don't have a watering thing over here. So I think that that's going to be kind of important for us. All right, let's get this stuff watered. What are we going to do on day four? Well, I think I'm going to go, it's either day four or five that um, the community center unlocks. So we're going to go check on that. Um, we got a little bit more fishing to do. We got to get the carp, I think it's what it is, which is the, the lake um, up by the mines. We got to mine there in order to get it. Yeah, I think I'm feeling pretty, pretty good about that. Also, can I incubate an egg? No, that's E egg. Is this the feeder? Ah, uh, when do you get the incubator? I gotta remember. I think it's the next coop, maybe? Which is fine. I mean, I'm happy. We've got we've got two two chickens doing their thing at the moment. I'm, I'm very satisfied <laughs> with the year uh, with their output. I think right now we sell their their eggs. Um, just to try to make a tiny bit more money. And then we'll kind of go from there. So let's get rid of that. Um, I don't need the watering can. I ain't going to be watering anything. I'm going to keep the pole. I'll keep the axe and the hoe. I'll probably get rid of the axe, to be perfectly honest. Mm. Yeah, let's get rid of it for now. Because I don't know what kind of foraging I'm going to be able to find. See, and this is why we keep the hoe. Because we've got some wormies here. Which is going to get us the rusty cog. Uh, which is nice. That's going to allow us to go to the museum, turn that in, which we'll head over there and do it. We got uh, a coal out of that. I don't know if the coal was worth it, but well, I mean, we're going to need it. Um, looks like the community center is probably day five because it's not popping up here. Totally fine. I just, uh, <laughs> just wish we could start turning in things because it's going to save us some, some space in our chest because we can clear all of that stuff out and sell it um from from now on without having to like worry about what space we're taking in our chest so um like the daffodil and the spring um onions just like stuff like that, that i don't really need to be holding on to but i'm only holding on to so that way we can get uh the bundles done yeah it'll be nice to free up that space all right let's see what we can get here Wah. So we need cauliflower. We know we need a lot of cauliflower. So I think that's what I'm going to double down on to cauliflower. And then we'll do parsnips on the next big uh, money gain. Because the cauliflower is one of those that we're going to be using for the... Uh, oh, I can sell the daffodil right now. Nice. Get another cauliflower seed. So it's, it's how we're going to be utilizing our gifts um, with, with Maru and... And I just need as much of that as possible. So I got to get started on it right away. And the thing is, it takes 12 days to produce, right? So I, it's 28 days to, to do it. I think I'm only going to get one round of cauliflower. Um, like one big round of cauliflower. Do I want to talk to Clint? Let's just meet him. We'll figure while I'm over here, just so we can pop this up. He says, hi, I'm Clint. I'm the town blacksmith. If you've ever needed an upgrade for your tools, I'm your guy. I am. I'm going to need, I'm going to need a lot of upgrades very quickly, but we need to, uh, we need to pop into here and see what we got. There we go. Do I get money for doing this? I don't remember. I'm going to find out. Abysmal. 
Not a single piece in the entire collection. What's this? You found something? Let me see it. <laughs> I'm just like gonna give him a ancient cog. Really have to emphasize that G. <laughs> Remarkable. It's very old. Uh, I'd love to study this in greater detail, but it is yours. I'm like, nah, man, I don't, I, I found it in the dirt. I don't need it. I've got a favor to ask you. Would you consider donating any new artifacts or minerals that you find? We can make a groundbreaking discovery together. Oh, and who knows? If you keep donating, I might come across some interesting items to send your way. Think about it, will you? If you decide to donate, just bring the objects to the front desk. I... I'm okay with the museum in Stardew Valley. I think it's a really cool thing that you get all this stuff. There's a book missing here. Yeah, I know. I need to find the books. All right, let's donate this. Uh, and then we'll talk about the museum. So, wait, did I get money? Let's check it. 250 gold. Heck yeah, we can go get more. <laughs> let's go do it, baby. Uh, especially before it closes. Although, I sh should have enough time, yeah, to go down to the beach and collect anything down there and then we'll, we'll, we'll head up. But yeah, the museum is interesting because you're collecting things that you're just finding. And the ice, oh crap, is it going to go away? Do I have time to get that? I don't think I do. But, uh, it's going to go away, isn't it? Oh, I nailed it. <laughs> so the if you ever see the little water pokey bits, the bubbles, it means that the, the catch rate on fish is way, way higher there. And I rarely ever see it, I'm going to be honest. So I recommend keeping an eye out for it and um, trying to get it because you'll, you'll catch a lot more fish than you normally do. So I've leveled up my fishing. I've actually got quite a bit of stuff. Let's get uh, river jelly, which I believe is a new item. I'll take a look at it in a moment. So I got to do this very quickly, but the, the puddle just stopped. The puddle, whatever, the bubbles. There we go. But I got a geode from one of the chests while fishing. So we're going to go process this real quick. Uh, bada bing, bada boom. We've got some copper. Take it, you know. Um, and then, yeah, we also got this jelly. So... It says a rare jelly found in fresh water, plus 75 energy, plus 33 health, uh, plus 30 max energy. That's really nice. I I like that quite a lot, so we may, may hold on to that. I've got a bunch of fish here that I can sell, which is real nice. We need that money, and I think it's worth it to... Oh, no, no, no. Don't go, don't go fishing at piers. <laughs> Hitting the wrong buttons. Uh, this is one of those, those issues that you come across. Uh, can we buy... How many of these? Two... We can buy three. We're up to 16 cauliflower. That's really good. That's really, really good. That's going to last us a very long time gifting tomorrow. Um, because I believe you can only gift like... Is it twice? Let's look. Yeah, it's like twice per week, I think, or something like that. Um, so it'll be nice to to be able to just have a bunch of cauliflower for a while. Just get our, our hearts up with her. Ideally, I would like to have befriended her enough that she'll dance with me at the spring festival or whatever it's called the flower dance that's what it's called um but i she's she's not one of the ones that i could pick to do that unfortunately because what she likes as like gifts um we can't get super super early but what, what we can get and which is nice is we can we can really farm out the cauliflower um we'll get rid of that and yeah we're just gonna go ahead and quick stack in there um yeah i need the hoe so what am i doing one two three four five i have i have a rows of five here so we'll go ahead and get this planted okay so now we have to go do the most important thing even though i'm out of money which is unfortunate um i eh, i can't really get any more money i should have saved it and, and i mentioned this in the previous episode but this is gonna happen this is gonna happen quite a lot where i mention something and then completely forget why i mentioned it oh there's a cave over there we should check and see if it's a, the normal cave or not or if there's anything different with it but um, unfortunately i am locked in my own farm here I, I gotta find a way around this but there is the traveling um mer merchant vendor thing that we're gonna go take a look at and see exactly what she has this time and what I missed out on because I don't have the money to, to purchase from her. But we can also go through and pick up any foraging that's down there. Ah, I'm mixing it up. See, this is, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, but I'm mixing it up. It's Fridays and Sundays, not Thursdays 
and and Sundays. I thought it was Thursdays and Sundays. Why? Because I've been playing too many other similar games at the same time. Uh, let's talk to Leia real quick. Uh, there's actually a lot of wild food in this area if you know where to look. I do. That's where I'm headed. Yeah, so like I mentioned this previously, but I've been playing a lot of Coral Island. And I've been really enjoying it. And this is going to loop back to my, um, my, my museum conversation that I was having earlier. But the in Coral Island, there's very similar stuff to Stardew Valley. They've just kind of tweaked it a bit. <laughs> like, for example, I feel like I'm moving so slow right now because in Coral Island, um, you can hit space bar and dash. And it's gotten, it doesn't like, it doesn't use up any of your stamina. It doesn't, um, you know, it, it's, it, there's no detriment to dashing. It's just a faster way of, of getting around. And it's kind of like, um, I don't know, like if you're playing Hades and you were like dashing around, like that's, that's the kind of thing that is it's just like a, like a combat dash, which is really nice when you're in the mines and you're fighting monsters and whatnot in, in Coral Island. But it's just straight a faster way to maneuver. So because of that, I do feel like I'm kind of, uh, let's go ahead and eat this. Cause you never know what we can get from these. I just don't want to waste myself. All right. So we got a book. That's fine. We can take that to the library. Yeah. So I, I'm in that situation where trying to remember different things about the two different games, but it's all kind of mashing together. It's very similar to when I play Terraria and I, I play so much modded Terraria that all of the mod knowledge just kind of blends together into one. So it's hard to remember what is what and where you get different things. It's, it's, it's a struggle. I know it's like first world problem struggle, but it is a, it is definitely a struggle. But when it comes to the museum, oh yeah, level two, what did we get? How much money do we think we got here? Quite a lot. I'm very happy with that amount. Uh, that gives us an opportunity to get a bunch of parsnips. If we get this money engine rolling very early, it makes our life way easier. Let's check this out. Uh, weather is going to be clear and sunny tomorrow. Fortune teller. Do, do, do. Mildly perturbed. So this is only one day it hasn't been mildly perturbed. Oh, hello, Clint. Uh, hi there. Good morning. I noticed that you've been breaking some rocks open and finding ore. That's good. If you want to get the most out of those ores you find, you'll need a furnace. Just so happens, I had an extra set of blueprints laying around here. Want you to have them. Nice. Now we can make a furnace. Yep. I need more rocks. I don't think I have enough rocks. Furnace allows you to smelt metal bars. Bars can be used for crafting, construction, and tool upgrades. Oof. It's a lot to do here. When you've smelted a few copper bars, consider having me upgrade one of your tools. It can make your work a lot easier. Well, okay, I'm headed home. Take it easy. Uh, we are going to focus down getting our axe upgraded twice if we can. Oh, man, we're just getting visited by everybody. Hello, Zen. You see this dog here? Yeah, it's my pup. Give me my pup. I wanted this dog. I found it sitting outside the entrance to your farm. I think it's a stray. Poor thing. I haven't even met you, woman. You just coming out of my farm, Marty? <laughs> it seems like uh, this place. It seems to like this place. Hey, um, don't you think this farm could use a good dog? Yes. What are we going to name the dog? Well, we've kind of gone with a Baldur's Gate theme for um, for our chickens. But for most of everything else, I'm going to go with a Warhammer theme. <laughs> and our dog is going to be uh, Ab Abaddon. I think that's how you spell Abaddon. I'm going to double check it. Correct. <laughs> Those of you who know Warhammer would be like, why are you naming your dog Abaddon? Look, it's a it's a cool character. <laughs> You'd be a good pooch, pooch now, okay? Noise. Um, I didn't do it in the previous episode, but I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it here. Um, if you're interested in seeing the work that I do for miniatures and miniature painting and all that stuff, I'll leave a, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check out the, um, the Instagram account that I run. 
where you can see all my painted stuff that I, I do for commission or whatnot. Uh, to our valued, th that's going to tie in in a moment to another conversation here. Th to our valued Jojo Mart customers, our team members have removed the landslide caused by our drilling operation near the mountain lake. I'd like to remind you that our drilling operation is entirely legal. Pursuit to uh, in it L6 blah blah blah. Responsible stewardship of the local environment is our top priority. Yeah, I know it's not. We apologize for any inconvenience this accident may have caused. As always, we value your continued support and patronage. Morris Joja, customer satisfaction representative. Yeah. Thanks for the mail. So here's the thing. Okay, first off, we have one parsnip now, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. And I do believe today is the day for the bundles. So I'm gonna make a trip back here and pick all that stuff up because I've got a lot of stuff to bundle up. Um, although I can't do it all at once, I need to do all of the spring foraging and I think I can do that. I think I can get all of that done. So maybe we should just put that in my inventory already. So. Yeah, when it, let's go back to Coral Island for a moment. So when it comes to the museum in Stardew Valley, it's cool, but it is kind of boring. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm just being honest. It's kind of boring, especially after you've done it many times. And like the fact that you find this stuff on a fairly consistent basis. Um, ooh, I just uh, leveled up my, what do you call it? What is it called? Is it like, uh, why do I keep on to say animal husbandry? That's not it. Ranching? No, I think that's the Coral Island tank. Damn it. It's just all of this information in my head. It's just mixing around. Um, yeah, the, the museum's boring, but in, in Coral Island, they've kind of fixed that. And I kind of wish it would have something similar here. Now I got to back this up and say that Coral Island is a kickstarted game. It, if you're going to pick it up right now, as we're speaking, if it's the spring steam sale, so it's like 20% off or something like that. Totally worth it for like the 20 bucks that it is. And even though it is uh, officially quote unquote released, it still is missing content. It's not completed, which is unfortunate. Um, however, the good news with it is that it is still mostly complete and they're about to come out with a new update later or early summer. I think it's what it is that will finish off most of the, the, the main storyline and everything, but you're not going to get there by the time. Like if you picked it up now and just like beelined it, sure. But if you picked it up now and played like a couple times a day, you're, you're more than good. You're going to make it there. Anyways, the way that they've solved it is because they are a Kickstarter game. They had this idea and it was to, do this weird thing where they have a museum just like they do in this game and you go and donate stuff just like you do in this game but the guy who runs the museum gets this bright idea to do a essentially a kickstarter campaign to make the museum cooler to bring more people to the island because that's kind of the whole goal of the game it's like increase tourism without messing with the wildlife and stuff like that right so the idea behind it is like this guy runs this kickstarter campaign and it gets a bunch of like these founders, the, you know, the people who kickstarted this campaign to make this museum really big. Um, and like, they have like this whole founders hall of people who are actual Kickstarter backers of that game, just really, really cool. But like, as you donate stuff, you see like a bar filling it up and it, it increases the rank of the town, which is kind of the same thing as like trying to finish the bundles and everything. It's like really, really cool. I recommend checking it out if you're interested. Um, but Stardew Valley is freaking fantastic as well. He says, hmm. I was just peering down into this old mine shaft. <laughs> yeah, Marlon, you, um, you got some issues, buddy. It's been abandoned for decades. Still, there's probably good ore down there. But a dark place, undisturbed for so long, I'm afraid ore isn't the only thing you'll find. Find dragons. Uh, here, take this. You might need it. A crappy sword. Thanks, buddy. Better than nothing. Name's Marlin, by the way. I run the Adventurer's Guild right outside. I'll keep my eye on you. Prove yourself, and I might think about making you a member. Uh, they changed the Adventurer's Guild in this update. They made it so that he um, keeps it open till 2 a.m. 
which is really nice because before you, I think I already went like that way, didn't I? Because before you would come out of the mines and like might have some stuff to go sell to them or whatever, or go turn into them. And it would be, it'd be closed down because it was too late. I hated that. So now it stays open. That's a nice little quality of life change. Let's go see if we get the community center now. I believe it's the fifth. No, I don't think it is. I thought it was, but I guess not. <sighs> it's one of those. Maybe it's the sixth that we get the bundles. I don't remember exactly what it is. You know what? I'm going to look it up and then we'll know for sure how we get the bundles. Oh, okay. I was right. To enter the... Yeah, so I need to enter Pelican Town, which is where we're at, from the bus stop on a day when it's not raining from the 5th onwards between 8 and 1. So we are currently within that realm. So we're just going to pop down to the left and we're going to come back over to the right. Which seems really silly. Oh, uh, you know what? I should probably just go get my uh, foraging stuff as well while I'm at it. There we go. Nailed it. Oh, hi there. What an eyesore. I love the music in this game. This is the Pelican Town Community Center, or what's left of it anyway. It used to be the pride and joy of the town, always bustling with activity. Now, just look at it. It's shameful. These days, the young folk would rather sit in front of the TV than engage with the community. But listen to me, I sound like an old fool. Joja Corporation has been hounding me to sell them the land so they can turn it into a warehouse. Pelican Town could use the money, but there's something stopping me from selling it. I guess old timers like me get attached to relics of the past. Oh well. If anyone buys a Joja Co. membership, I'm just going to go ahead and sell it. <sighs> Here, let's go inside. I like how it sounds so windy in here. Hmm? What's this? I guess Vincent and Jazz must have uh, been playing in here. This place is even more dilapidated than I remember. <laughs> what? Okay, we turned around. It's not there. What's the matter? Are you ill? <laughs> you saw something? Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this place was full of rats. <laughs> You're worrying me, Zen. Look, I think I'm going to head home. I need some lunch. Hey, I'll, I'll keep this place unlocked from now on. Maybe you can keep or you can help catch that rat if you have some extra time. Maybe I will. Ain't no rat though. Strange dot dot dot. I'll have to come back and explore this building further. Let's do it, baby. Um, It's Friday, right? So we got to keep our money. Got to keep, keep that in mind. Can I actually go in there and <laughs> bundle this stuff? <laughs> I think I can, maybe. I remember like something or you can't read it. Oh, that's right. You can't read it. I can't bundle it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't read it. Then the wizard gets a hold of you and is like, yo, like come, come. Yes, this game has a wizard, by the way. It's like, yo, come to my wizard tower and I'll teach you how to do the language thing. And then you're like, cool, bro. <laughs> that's how it happened. Look, man, that's the, that's the, the actual script of the game. <laughs> it's a cool wizard. Also, if you're, again, new to Stardew Valley, this is like the, the turning point in the game where you get to make a choice whether you go to the Joja route or you go towards the route for, um, um, oh, cheese cauliflower. Oh, it's 900, though. <laughs> ooh, red cabbage. Oh, damn it. I don't have enough. It, oh, man, I might be able to go sell some stuff and get enough to get the red cabbage. 
this is a problem is you need the red cabbage for the bundles. And this is why we did that checkbox right at the beginning to make sure that we can get this. Let's see here. Red cabbage. Okay. It's in the dye bundle. Yeah. That's a tough one to get. So I think I go sell it and buy the red cabbage because everything else here I can get. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about any of the rest of this. The chub is annoying, but we can we can get that. We're master fishers. All right, let's oh crap. How much time do we got? We got to run to uh, Pierre's. We gotta try to sell something. I might be able to sell something to uh, Marnie over here. We could try that, see if she'll accept anything. Otherwise, we have to go to Piers. Supply shop. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to go there in order to sell this stuff. And I may not even be able to sell this stuff. I'm like, do I go grab that carrot real quick and get that sold? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, sorry, my, my thoughts are all over the place for various reasons. But chief among them is that bad news that I got the other day. And my mind is just like scrambled at the moment. But what I will say, is to to wrap up that thought on the splitting yeah you you either choose to go the joja mart route or to help the town um and that's fine all right so we'll sell that and we can sell that that gives us more than enough now to, to go get that close one though <laughs> it is close we we almost did not have enough i could sell the rest but it's i may as well just throw it in the um in the supply box before before we go to sleep, I am going to go forage over there as well. And as I was saying earlier, we're going to focus the axe to upgrade so we can get this big old thing of wood knocked down off to the left over here so we can get to the secret woods, which will allow us to start getting all of those rare materials that's in there as well. Especially if we do that before the end of spring, which is really hard to do, but we'll see. All right, let's jump down here, grab that cabbage, baby, and just have it done. Now we don't have to worry about the cabbage. Whew. Done, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a good one to get right off the bat, I'll tell you. So I think we're going to finish off this day with just a little bit of fishing. Try to catch some stuff before headed back. Um, I mean, fishing is just so good for us. It's going to allow us to get all that extra money. Like, fishing is going to be such a good money generator right off the bat. And I do recommend uh, doing it even if you don't really like the fishing, just to, just to get all this stuff. Hey, we got the chub. Remember how I was saying like, oh yeah, we don't need to buy that. We could just catch the chub. Well, we got it and we need it. So that's for the bundle as well. Nice. Also, we got an achievement. Is this, was that achievement stuff in the PC version before? I don't remember. This is the problem is the most recent version of the game that I played a lot of was on the Xbox. And I don't remember that kind of stuff popping up because it would just pop the Xbox achievements. Um, so I feel like I'm playing a whole different game. We got our carp, which I believe might be something we need. Yeah, it's on my list here. So remember how I was saying I got sticky notes? Yeah, carp's on there. We still have, let's see here. Let's, let's pull this sticky note and look at it after this fish, obviously. Got to focus on the fish, man. Not the fish, man. The, the fish, comma, man. Got another chub. So we've got, uh, let's see here, apricots and cherries. There's going to be... Just impossible for us to get in spring. We have to buy those from the traveling merchant. It's totally fine. I'm not I'm not worried about that, but it, it is one of those annoying ones where we just don't have an option. You you can't physically put a tree down and get it to to get that stuff. Um we need a moral, which is a uh a a uh, mushroom. Uh we need a common mushroom. We got the carp. That we just needed. Uh, we're going to have cauliflower, green beans, parsnips, and potatoes. And those are the last things that we needed. So what we got? Uh, we got the eel, the sardine. Oh, we don't have the five-star parsnips either. Um, the ch uh, Yeah, the shad, the sunfish. We got the daffodil, dandelion, leek, and wild horseradish we all got. So yeah, in spring, we've gotten most of what we need. And the stuff that we don't currently have is just growing, <laughs> bar like a handful of things. Now, I obviously can collect some of this stuff outside of spring as well, like the chub. So I'm not um, worried about the time frame on that one. But hey, getting it done, that's the key is <laughs> this always surprised my wife when we were playing together because we would be playing and I would do the fishing. She didn't want to do any of the fishing. And 
I would like get these fishing bundles done. I actually was focused on getting the bundles done, period. She just didn't care. She just wanted to go into the mines and dig and just have fun. Well, I was like, no, keep that. Let me have that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to move that. And she's like, why are you just stealing all my stuff? I'm like, because it's for the bundles. She's like, screw your bundles. <laughs> but I would, I would go and I would turn them in. And it would shock her because she's like, wait, what? Like, how did you get all of that stuff? Like, how did you get all those seeds? Wait, how did you get that item? How did, how did you get? And it's like, well, by turning in the bundles, they give you rewards for it. And we need to make sure that we are just keeping all of this stuff because the sooner we can get those rewards, the better our chances are of um, of getting that slingshot, getting that extra momentum going into the future season so we can get everything done by by the first year. Now, I'm recording this episode the same day as that first episode that I put out today. And so far, the, the response to that first episode is very positive. Oh, I see the fishing thing up there now, and I've missed it. Uh, I might be able to run up there, but uh, we got to go back anyways after this next fish. So I, I've got things coming up on this weekend that I'm actually kind of nervous about. So I, as I mentioned, I do miniature painting as a job. Well, my local game store that I go play games at, um, I play Warhammer and Star Wars games, such as like Star Wars Shatterpoint. That's my main game at the moment because it's nice and quick. Uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of time to set up and whatnot. And it's really fun. I really, really like Star Wars Shatterpoint. Uh, well, I go on Saturdays because I'm a part of a league at our game store and we call it Shatter Days <laughs> because that's just we're stupid and that's a funny thing. Um, and our league is finishing up on this Saturday. So I, I have to play my last couple games and see where I rank. I've, I think I've lost only two games out of like five. So I'm like three and three and two, which is not bad. Um, I'm not there to, to try to win though. Oh, hold on. Let me look at the bundles real quick. Okay. We got to make sure that we save these three specific fish. Um, Oh, oh, can we organize that? Whoop. Okay, now all the fish are kind of all lined up. That That's way more helpful. <laughs> uh, do I have anything else I could put in there? I could do that. I could sell these. I want to keep the bait and we'll sell the trash. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I've, yeah, I've got to, I've got to do the last couple of games. I'm not really trying to win. I'm just trying to have fun because it's a nice little hobby thing that I get to do on Saturday. But, ooh, we leveled up farming. But, unfortunately, at the same time, I have, a, I have a class that I'm starting to teach. I'm teaching painting classes at our game store. I'm being compensated for it, which is nice. But uh, this is like our the demo of the class on Saturday. So I have to have everything prepared for that and play a, a, a league game for, for Shatterpoint. Ugh, it's brutal. Clear and sunny all day tomorrow. Okay, fortune teller. They're mildly perturbed. Everything's mildly perturbed. We just have bad luck. You... <laughs> If you want to know my kind of bad luck that I have, because it's easy to say I have bad luck, but you don't quite understand how much bad luck I have until you go and watch my Baldur's Gate 3 series. Please go watch it. You will, over the course of like the first 10 episodes, go, wow, your luck is really bad. You do roll really bad with dice. You have no idea. <laughs> it gets worse and worse and worse where on a given episode i'm rolling like five twos and two ones out of 10 rolls <laughs> constantly constantly and no nothing changes it all right uh my sources tell me you've been poking around inside the old community center by the way that's hilarious that's why i'm telling you to go watch it it is really funny watching that happen uh maybe it's because i was born on a friday 13th who knows? In October. Why don't you pay me a visit? My chambers are west of the forest lake in the stone tower. I may have information concerning your rat problem. Okay. And then I've got some new items in stock, a deluxe fishing pole and some bait that you can attach to it. You can use bait to make fish bite faster. I hope you see, I hope to see you soon, Willie. Hey, everybody's trying to get a hold of me. Hi, me sell hats. Okay, poke. Come to old, old, old house, poke. Bring coins, hat mouse. Now another one, geez, dear Farmer Zen, I'd like to apologize for joking about your grandpa's old cottage when we first met. It's a really nice little house. However, you might need some more space someday. That's where I can help. If if you bring me some raw materials and pay a fee, I can expand your house. Continued on next page. 
The first expansion I offer includes a kitchen. With a kitchen, you'll be able to cook any recipes you've learned. Anyway, I hope you're starting to feel at home in Stardew Valley. Your local carpenter, Robin. Anybody else? Jeez, goodness. Like everybody's trying to get a hold of me today. Let's get our water can. Um, because we can. All right, enough of the the random chores on our on our farm. It's time to go to the wizard and learn this language so I could turn all this stuff in and free up some inventory space. Then we got to start kind of managing our resources here. How, how do I want to do this, right? Because I know that I need to upgrade things. I would love to upgrade our coop, but that's, that, that's while I would like to have that done by the end of spring, that's not happening right now. So like I got to consider, I need a silo so I can start collecting hay. Um, that's probably the priority. So we need to start going into the mines to get us some stones while also getting copper and all that. Ah, come in. He's so fancy. I like how his name is wizard here. I am Rasmodius, seeker of the arcane truths. Mediary between physical and ethereal. Master of the seven elementals. Keeper of the sacred ch oh, you get the point. And you, Zen, the one whose arrival I have long foreseen. Here, I'd like to show you something. Behold! <laughs> yeah, there's a supernatural element to Stardew Valley. You've seen one before, haven't you? They call themselves the Junimos. Ju Junimos? Junimos. I'm going to go with Junimos. Mysterious. I don't think I've ever really said it out loud before. That's a weird thing. Mysterious spirits. These ones. For some reason, they refuse to speak with me. I'm not sure why they've moved into the community center, but you have no reason to fear them. Hmm? You found a golden scroll written in an unknown language? Most interesting. Stay here. I'm going to see for myself. I'll return shortly. <laughs> you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of like the, um, the, like the, the, so like a town shaman or whatever it is, I guess, from, um, from Willow. Where he's, you know, they're trying to determine what to do. And he's like, I will consult the bones. And he rolls like all these bones. He's like, the bones tell me nothing. <laughs> I love that movie. I found the note. The language is obscure, but I was able to decipher it. We, the Junimo, are happy to aid you. In return, we ask for gifts of the valley. If you are one with the forest, then you will see the true nature of this scroll. Hmm. One with the forest. What do they mean? <laughs> Aha. Come here. My cauldron is bubbling with ingredients from the forest. Baby fern, moss grub. Oh, that was a new thing they added, right? Um, they added moss to older trees that you can you can collect. Very interesting. Wonder what it's used for. Uh, that's the thing with a new update like this. And it's still the first day of the update as I'm recording this. We don't have any any idea. We just got to figure this out until the wiki is updated and whatnot. Caramel top toadstool. Can you smell it? Here, drink up. Let the essence of the forest permeate your body. <laughs> Ooh, I got 38 energy. Heck yeah. Hey, he's gonna puke. This is very trippy. What did what did he have in that? Like, really, what did he have in that? 
you know? What's he lacing it with? <laughs> you you believe for a moment that the wizard who has secluded himself in the middle of the forest isn't doing fishy stuff out here, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know he is. You know he is. You've gained the power of the forest magic. You can now decipher the true meaning of the Junimo scrolls. Yep, off we go. It's almost 9 a.m., just bright and early. We're gonna get stuff done. Gotta get these bundles filled out. Gotta get all this space cleared out in my inventory. I'm having to like walk through a lot of this stuff because I'm just leaving leaving my tools back at home, which is which is a tip that I would give people playing Stardew Valley. Right off the bat, your inventory management sucks. Even when you get the upgrade, you are only getting one extra line, which I guess is it's doubling your inventory. Sure, it's nice, but it's still not enough. Even the third line is still not enough. You just you're constantly running into inventory issues in this game. The one way of, to get around that initially is to, of course, just go put your tools in a chest that you're not going to use. Like you're not going to use your watering can running around the valley. You're not going to use your axe, most likely. You're not going to use your scythe, right? Unless you really need to collect some stuff in the valley. Because you could chop these trees down. Yeah, I'm sure you can chop the grass and everything. Like you can, you can obviously get stuff out of it. But if you really want, uh, let's talk to him. Ahoy there. It's nice to see young folk moving into the valley. It's not very common these days. Is it? You don't want to talk to me anymore? Anyway, so you, yeah, you really just want to make sure that you're doing your best. To, to keep your tools back at home that you're not going to need. It saves a lot of inventory space. It's really convenient. And I think it's probably the biggest tip I can give somebody. Another thing that you can actually do too, it's kind of an interesting idea. Most people fill up their inventory and start getting frustrated with the inventory management right off the bat when they start getting into the cave. Because they're like, I cannot collect things because there's so much to collect here and... I don't have the inventory space. Totally get it. You know what you can do? You can actually build a chest and put it at the entrance of the elevator in the cave. And that way you can pop up when you get to an elevator floor um, and, you know, dump things in and then go back down. So it's kind of a convenient way of doing it. All right, spring foraging bundle. You bet your butt. I'm just going to do this real quick. Get these filled out. Bundle complete. So if we finish this whole bundle, we get the bridge repair. But... By completing this one, we get 30 spring seeds. Ooh, so nice. That is such a nice jumping point for everything else. Got the construction bundle. Don't need that. That one, no. That's exotic foraging, summer foraging. Um, yeah, that's why we need the moral. And the resins and stuff like that. Cool. Okay, but this little Junimo is going to go package this away, but it unlocks the pantry for us and by unlocking the pantry i think maybe the fish tank too yeah yeah so we can go put our fish in there heck yeah that's uh, free up so much space and i think we i don't think we get to finish one of those we're pretty close though um so we can pop in our parsnip so we can get that almost done but now um the artisan bundle we don't have anything we can really do here yet, but it'll be nice to get the cheese and, and all that going. Um, the quality crop, crops bundle is the thing that we need the parsnip for. And if we could just blast these out and get them done, like we don't necessarily need the five-star parsnips because we only need three of them. We could get those in the other seasons. It's just easier to get it done and out of the way. We got our eggs. So large egg for the white or the... Um, the, the the brown eggs, which is fine, milk, all that stuff. Yeah, we we're, we're getting it all, um, but we've got green beans, cauliflower, and potatoes currently growing. We're getting there. We're, we're very much getting there. What out of the fishing bundle can we get done? Um, we have the sunfish, sunfish. We don't have the catfish. We have the shad, and we don't have the tiger trout. Um, ocean crab pot lake. Um, we have the carp. It's a bullhead. We have the bream and the eel. We can't get the wallet yet. We do have a mussel there. And we've got the sardine. So, like, we could put a lot of fish into these for sure. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, and if you never knew this, if you 
go to your um, inventory, there's a community center thing here. You can now see it just from there. Kind of nice, convenient. But we are going to use the app that I have to track it because it's going to make it, it easier for me from a production standpoint to know what I've done and what I've not done. I'm going to pop two books in here. Book is by Marnie. Animals are very sensitive. They like to be pet every day and prefer to eat grass outdoors than dry hay. They don't like being outside in the rain, though. Happy animals produce higher quality products. Another one here. Oh, wait, no, that one is still by Marnie. Is that right? Did I? Isn't that supposed to go away? I thought it was supposed to go away. There we go. Tips on farming. Use fertilizer to improve quality, reduce workload, or hasten crop growth. Fruit trees take a whole season to grow, but they require very little maintenance. Keep the area directly around your new sapling clear, or else it may not grow properly. Crops will die as soon as the season ends, unless they grow in multiple seasons, like corn. Some crops, such as kale and wheat, need to be harvested with scythes. Cool. All right, we got some donations that I found. Got this little star thing, put that there. Not gonna get anything out of it. Totally fine. Okay, now, um, how do I want to do this? I could go buy some seeds. I have 721 gold. But at the same time, I kind of feel like what I want to do is hold on to it. Because tomorrow is Sunday. And on Sundays, the traveling merchant comes through again. And I might be able to pick up other things for our bundles there. So it might just be easier to hold on to the gold and then do it a different day. I also need to go plant these 30 seeds. And that's going to start taking up so much of my energy every day, just watering it. So I'm really looking forward to days that are raining. Because then on those rainy days, I'm just, I'm honestly just going to go do the, um, the mine, I think. Is my dog stuck back here? Come on, buddy. Get out of there. Let me go say hi to my pup. Good puppy. Good, good Abaddon. <laughs> Man, if you, if you know Warhammer, that's a funny joke. All right, so I got all my fish put in, um, minus the chub. The chub, I think it's on the bulletin board. It's like the research bundle, I believe. So we're going to go just check over here and make sure that's not in this one and that it's not in the bottom one, just so I'm not carrying it around for no reason. But... Hopefully that is the, uh, the case. Exotic foraging, construction, summer, winter. Okay, yeah. Feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so that means that I need to finish one more bundle in order to unlock that. And then I can get rid of that one too. Oh, hey, Mara is here. Let's talk to her. Do you know my dad, Demetrius? He's a scientist. I have a lot of fun helping him out in the laboratory. Isn't, he, isn't Maru the nurse? Hmm. I guess I know where I should be finding her every day then. Um, Cause you should be talking to them every day. So I, I should probably put some actual effort into that. Oh, hello there. Abigail says, oh, that's right. I heard someone new was moving into that old farm. Don't tell anyone, but I snuck into the old community center last night. I think it's haunted. You know what? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> With Junimos. Oh, spirit woodland creatures, you know? Whatever those might be. I think that's the fun thing about the, like the Harvest Moon legacy. Is that there are a lot of games in this this series of games that are all kind of in the same genre. That all have something weird about them. Um, and, you know, honestly, that kind of comes from the fact that it's, you know, Harvest Moon was a, was a Japanese based studio that made the game. And they get, their games always have something weird in them. If you've ever played like a JRPG, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nothing wrong with it. It's, it's fun and it's charming and it's what's cool about that culture. Is they, they like to add some fun, interesting stuff that we just don't get in the West here. And I like that Stardew Valley has continued that like mystical thing that uh, Harvest, Harvest Moon always did. And I, and I really appreciate that. There was one Harvest Moon. Oh, which one was it that I played? It's either on the PS1 or the PS2. And you know what? I'm going to look it up. You know what? It was definitely both the PS1 and the PS2. So PS1 was Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Really enjoyed that one. It wasn't super great. But the one that stands out to me for whatever reason is Harvest Moon from the PS2 era. It was, I think it's called A Wonderful Life. I have to look up screenshots of it. Yeah, 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 it's this one. 
I actually kind of liked that one. It was very charming. It was different. It was very different. You know what game series I really loved from the PlayStation era, though? I talk about this often in my first impressions videos, which if you don't know, I have a series that I do called First Impressions, where I jump into a game fresh, not knowing anything about it, and give like a, my first impressions over like 20 or 30 minutes of the game, just like live first impressions. And I bring up this game series a lot because a lot of games have inspiration from it, but I've never seen a game quite like it, which is Dark Moon, um, or not Dark Moon, Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud was, goodness, like one of the coolest games ever <laughs> on the PS1 era. It was very ambitious. It's like a dungeon crawler. So you would go into these dungeons and you would do kind of like Stardew Valley. You do different levels as you go through. Um, you would kill monsters and get loot and there'd be bosses and whatnot. And the whole point of it was that you were picking up these like fragments of this town that got raided and is now destroyed um it's, it's this is like a paraphrasing it's basically like everything got captured um and you're trying to like rebuild the town and you could do so and th think of a ps1 era game right where you are rebuilding a town by delving into a dungeon and picking up these like fragments of the past and laying it out the way that you kind of want to, but there's, there's like a guideline to it. Like, you know, these, this certain person likes this certain things. So you kind of want to make sure that they have like this stuff next to their house. And it was just cool. And then dark cloud two came out on the PS two and that game was like revolutionary. It was awesome. It was kind of the same idea. Oh, I see the fishing spot there. See if we can get it in a second. Um, it was it was the same idea, but it was just way better. And there was such cool little things in it that just made it weird, like good weird, good good weird. Um, for example, for example, let's see if I can even get to that spot. I don't know if I can. My goodness. No, I don't know if I can even get to that spot. It's like way out there. I'll get as close as I can. Maybe that works. Um, they had this whole like camera that you could take pictures of, uh, or take pictures with in the game. And it would go into like a first person, because it was a third person action game, but it would go into like a first person view when you went to go use the camera. And th the way the crafting system worked was just very <sighs> crazy. And there were combinations with like this camera and crafting that just were insane. And unless you thought of it just like wait what if i do this dot 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 and you you decided to do a crazy thing with crafting because it was kind of more freeform like you were just adding stuff to, to create a final product um unless you thought of something and it worked out then you wouldn't really know that some of these crazy combinations worked and it was just like a fun very interesting series and I wish that they would remaster it, like actually remaster it. They did like a re-release of it. It's not great. Um, or, or let me say it was a re it was a remaster kind of, but what I would prefer is like a full on remake of dark cloud and dark cloud Two. maybe like bundle it even just give me like both the games. Oh, that'd be great. Oh man. I would love that. That's what they need to bring back is dark cloud one and two though. I will say, I think now I haven't done it yet. Um, I am going to do a first impressions of my time at Porsche and there's also my time at Sandrock, but I'm going to do Porsche first because from what I can tell, everybody says that Porsche is, you start with it because Sandrock is just so much better that if you do Sandrock first, you're not going to want to go back to Porsche and play it. Um, so my time at Porsche apparently has very similar vibes to dark cloud as i've been told so i think i'm gonna try that out maybe this week and do a first impressions of it and see exactly how close that might be